Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today, we have an episode of Commander's Two Cents. On episodes like these, I give you my own personal take on topics about the format in general and current news. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Also, make sure you check out the Poor Scene Stand, our limited edition playmat on Kickstarter that's only available for the 30-day campaign. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. In the final the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. On today's episode, we're going to talk about the most popular new commanders of 2019. So with this list, I'm only going to be including commanders that were just printed in 2019, not including commander reprints. I'm going to be using EDHREX numbers to rank these in terms of popularity. Before we jump into this though, I just want to mention one thing. I definitely realize that the commanders released earlier this year have had more time to have decks built around them than the new ones have. So they're not all going to be on an even playing field, but regardless, it's still a fun exercise to look at where things are now. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Let's get things started off with the 10th most popular commander of the year. And at number 10, we've got Anya Falkenrath. She first came out back in August in the Commander 2019 product. Currently, she's the commander for nearly 900 decks. She's a 1-3 vampire with haste that costs 1 black red. She has tap, discard a card, draw a card, and whenever you discard a card, if it has madness, untap Anya Falkenrath. At first glance, you just might think of this commander as a simple commander that's built around with just madness cards. But this commander is a value engine that's extremely powerful and very abusable. With the right build, she can churn through your entire deck in absolutely no time. You can tap her to rummage and then discard a madness card to rummage again. So with this deck, yes, you will be running plenty of madness cards. You're not necessarily going to be focusing on casting them though. The only thing that matters is that they actually have madness. There are a few though that can really stand out and be good in the deck. Call to the Netherworld says return target black creature card from your graveyard to your hand and it's got madness for zero. So you get that madness cost for free and you can return a black creature to your hand which might have madness as well so it's going to help you keep going. You can also get all those madness cards back with something like Shadow of the Grave. It says return to your hand all cards in your graveyard that were cycled or discarded this turn. So you can get all those madness cards back and rummage further and further. You can then finish off your opponents with something like Glinthorn Buccaneer which is going to deal damage to each opponent every single time you discard a card. Again with all the ways to continually discard and get cards back this can be a ton of cards in one turn. With the right setup, you can easily deal lethal damage very quickly. Anya is a very powerful commander and has definitely earned that number 10 slot. But now it's time for us to move on to number 9. Coming in at number 9 is Alayla Artful Provocator. She was printed in October in the Throne of Eldraine Brawl Precons. Currently, she's the commander in just over 900 decks. She's a 2-3 Fairy Warlock with Flying, Death Touch, and Lifelink that costs 1 white, blue, black. She has other creatures you control with Flying, get plus 1, plus 0, and whenever you cast an Artifact or Enchantment spell, create a 1-1 blue Fairy Creature token with Flying. So Alayla actually gives you a lot of options on what you can do with her. You can go for an Artifact build, an Enchantment build, or even a Fairy build. Because of that flexibility, she's become quite popular very quickly. Again, there are multiple directions that you can take her, but I'll just take you through one. Layla can be a fantastic commander for an Anthem build. Again, every single time that you cast an enchantment, you get a 1-1 fairy with flying. She's already going to be pumping all your flying creatures by one, and with some anthems, you can get them even bigger. A cheap anthem like Favorable Winds can be fantastic in this deck. It gives creatures you control with flying plus 1 plus 1. An anthem that can be even better is Intangible Virtue, which gives all creature tokens you control plus 1 plus 1 in Vigilance. And then other enchantments like Vitamin of Asta can round the deck out. It says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card, and by paying 1 in a blue, you can tap in a creature your opponent's control attack this turn of Fable. So this can draw you a ton of cards and force your opponents into bad attacks. Again, Alayla's only been out for a few months, but she's already seeing a ton of decks built around her. Time will tell if that number continues to grow. And now it's time for us to move on to number 8. Coming in in 8th place is Urza, Lord High Artificer. Urza was printed in Modern Horizons back in June. Currently, he's nearing 1,000 decks at 964. He's a 1-4 human artificer that costs 2 blue-blue. When he enters the battlefield, you create a 0-0 colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. And by tapping an untapped artifact you control, you can add blue. And by paying five, you shuffle your library, then exile the top card, and until the end of the turn, you may play that card without paying its mana cost. Many players consider this commander to be extremely pushed, if not broken. It essentially turns every single one of your artifacts into mana rocks. On top of that, it gives you a place to put all that mana that you're going to be generating. With the right cards, it's pretty easy to make a broken deck for this commander. By playing a lot of cheap or even free artifacts like Spellbook, you're going to make a lot of mana. In this this deck, Spellbook is essentially a mock Sapphire that also gives you no maximum hand size. You can also run things like Dramatic Reversal to generate you even more mana because it untaps all non-land permanents you control. And then Mirror to Besiege can essentially double up your artifacts if you choose Mirren. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you create a 1-1 colorless Mirror artifact creature token. So basically, with Urza in play, whenever you cast an artifact, you get another mana rock into play for free. 
With the Commander's push as this one, it's not surprising to see it make this list. But now let's move on to number 7. Coming up at 7th place is Morphon the Boundless. Like Urza, Morphon was printed in Modern Horizons. It's a 6-6 shapeshifter with Changeling that costs 7. When it comes into play, you choose a creature type, and then spells of the chosen type cost Wooburg less to cast. This effect reduces only the amount of colored mana you pay. In other creatures you control, the chosen type get plus 1 plus 1. So Morphon essentially can be the head of any tribal deck out there. Because of that, this opened up a lot of options for many people who wanted to build around certain tribes that weren't as supported as others. Some tribes simply don't have a commander that fits for them or for all their colors. Morphon has essentially become the go-to for those kinds of decks. Some examples of some tribes like this are Eldrazi, Gods, and Avatars. The only legendary Eldrazi are colorless, but Morphon gives you access to all colors. So in that deck, you can also put in some Devoid Eldrazi like Herald of Kozilek. The God tribe currently only has legendaries that have two colors like Farika, God of Affliction. With Morphon, you can include all the gods that you want. And then Avatars actually have a few five color commanders to choose from. But Morphon might be the best choice out of all of those since it can help with that color reducing. This is especially true for cards like Divinity of Pride which have a very restrictive casting cost. With the amount of tribes that Morphon open up possibilities for, it's no wonder that it's seeing so much play. But now let's move on to number 6. Coming in at number 6 is Korvald Fae Curse King. Like Alayla, Korvald is from Throne of Eldraine. Currently it's right under 1000 decks at 983. It's a 4-4 flying dragon noble that costs 2 black red green. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you sacrifice another permanent. And then whenever you sacrifice a permanent, you put a plus plus one counter on Korvald and draw a card. Korvald is an extremely potent value engine. Drawing you a card and getting bigger every single time you sacrifice something is absurd. Even without that plus plus one counter, this would still be a very powerful and highly played commander. So with this kind of a deck, you really want to lean into things that sacrifice themselves or sacrifice other things. Even with your ramp, something like Sakura Tribe Elder can come in huge. With Korvald in play, when you sack it, you get to ramp and draw a card. And then something that makes treasure like Pitiless Plunder can be even more effective. Again, with each treasure that you sacrifice, on top of making that mana, you're going to be drawing a card. With the amount of value that you can generate and things that you can sacrifice, finishing off opponents can be extremely easy. Korvald can easily get to 21 power, or you can finish off opponents with something like Mayhem Devil. It has whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, Mayhem Devil deals 1 damage to any target. Again, Korvald hasn't been out for too long, but he's already seeing a ton of decks built around him. It's an extremely powerful commander in some colors that really like to sacrifice things. But now let's move on to number 5. And the fifth most popular commander of 2019 is Kaikar Winds Fury. This commander was printed in M20, which came out in July. Currently, it's got 1,284 decks built around it. Kaikar is a 3-3 flying bird wizard that costs 1 blue, red, white. It has whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying. And then by sacrificing a spirit, you can add red. So Kaikar is actually pretty similar to Alayla. It doesn't have an anthem, but it does allow you to sacrifice spirits for mana. On top of that, unlike Alayla, it counts all non-creature spells, not just enchantments and artifacts. So one way to build around Kaikar is a Spellslinger deck. Cheap cantrips like Opt can be fantastic in this deck. Because again, every single time you cast one of these cantrips, you're going to be drawing a card on top of making a spirit that you can sacrifice for man to cast more cantrips. So cards like Jace's Sanctum can also be effective too, since they reduce the cost of your instants and sorceries. And on top of that, it says whenever you cast an in-store sorcery spell, scry one. So this can help you make your spells cheaper on top of getting rid of dead draws. You can even have more token producers like Tolran Sky Summoner. Again, like Alayla though, there are multiple directions directions that you can take this commander. You can take the Spellslinger approach, or even artifacts, or enchantments, or a storm deck, there's plenty of ways that you can take it. With all those directions, it's no surprise to see all those decks built around it. But now it's time for number 4. Coming in at 4th place is Yark the Desecrated. Like Kaikar, Yark was printed in M20. Currently has nearly 1400 decks built around it. It's a 3-5 elemental horror with death touch and lifelink that costs 2 black, green, blue. It has, if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So Yark is essentially a panharmonicon in the command zone, but even better, because it includes all permanents and not just artifacts or enchantments. Because of that, you can take this in many directions, but the most effective one that I found was Landfall. A simple card like Springbloom Druid can be a bomb in this deck. When it comes into play, you sacrifice a land and you get two basics into play tapped. With Yark, though, it doubles up this effect. So basically, you sacrifice two lands and get four into play tapped. And then your landfall triggers from those lands are doubled up as well. For example, let's look at Tatiova. She has whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life and draw a card. With those four lands coming into play, that's going to be eight landfall triggers. That means that you're drawing eight cards and gaining eight life for that three mana spell. The more things that you have in play that trigger, the better. With Zendikar's Royal in play, you're also getting eight two twos into play too. The amount of value that Yara can provide you is absolutely absurd. Again, there are a ton of different directions that you can build around it as well. With its power as well as its flexibility, it's no wonder that it got fourth place. And now let's move on to number three. Coming in at third place is Feather the Redeemed. Feather was printed in War of the Spark, which came out in May. At this point, she's got nearly 1,600 decks built around her. Feather is a 3-4 flying angel that costs red, white, white. She has whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets a creature you control, exile that card instead of putting it into your graveyard as it resolves if you do return to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. The problem with many Boros commanders and Boros decks is that they lack ways to have card advantage. Feather definitely breaks the mold in that aspect. When you cast an instant or sorcery that targets any of your creatures, you're gonna get it back. That makes certain cards, otherwise considered unplayable by most people, fantastic in this deck. A cantrip like Expedite can be a fantastic source of repeatable card draw. 
And then Sheltering Light can be a fantastic way to protect Feather on top of Scrying 1. Even simple pump effects like Brute Force have a place in this deck as well. For the Feather deck, you can choose to go wide or just go Voltron with Feather. Many people have been waiting for an effective Boros Commander and Feather was just the one that they wanted. Because of that, she was able to crack the top 3 for 2019. But now it's time for us to move on to number 2. Coming in at 2nd place is one of my personal favorites with Golos Tireless Pilgrim. Like Kaikar and Yarrick, Golos was printed in M20, and currently is the commander in over 1600 decks. Golos is a 3-5 scout that costs 5. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a land card, put that card into the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. By paying 2 in Wooburg, you exile the top 3 cards of your library, and then you can play those cards without paying their mana cost. This is an extremely powerful commander that gives you access to 5 colors. Essentially casting 3 things off the top of your library for 7 mana can be an extremely powerful effect. So this deck's going to be running a ton of ramp and giant spells to cast. One-sided board wipes like Ingaric's Wake can keep your opponents in check while not touching your board at all. All. And then cards like Aminatu's Augury can help you cast even more spells for free. Cards like Brass's Bounty can help you keep things going and give you one or even more activations. With cards like this, you can keep activating Golos over and over again, just turning through your entire deck and casting everything for free. There are even some Maze's End builds for Golos since it can tutor for lands. It's a very powerful 5 color commander that can be taken in a lot of different directions, so it definitely earned its second place. But now it's time for us to move on to the number one commander of 2019. Out of all the new commanders that were printed this year, the one that stands above the rest is Tasa Karloff. Tasa was printed back in Ravnica Allegiance, which came out last January. Currently, Tasa is the commander of just under 1,700 decks. She's a 2-4 human advisor that costs 2 white black. She has if a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers initial time. And because that wasn't enough, creature tokens you control also have Vigilance and Lifelink. She essentially can be considered the reverse of Yark. Instead of caring about things coming into play, she cares about things dying. This can generate you an absurd amount of value and makes for an incredible aristocrat-style commander. So you're going to be running plenty of things that actually want to die like Doom Traveler. With Tasa in play, when Doom Traveler dies, you're going to get two 1-1 one, one White Spirit creature tokens instead of one. A total of three bodies for just one mana is pretty absurd. Another piece of an Aristocrat-style deck is a free sacrifice outlet like Demir Houseguard. And of course you want some payoffs for sacrificing things like Zulaport Cutthroat. It says whenever it or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. And again with Tasa in play, that's doubled up as well. It doesn't take long for a Tasa deck to generate an absurd amount of tokens, sacrifice them all, and drain everyone out. The amount of value that Tasa gives you is hard to compete with. Aristocrats is a style of deck that many people enjoy, and Tasa might just be the best commander out there for those kinds of decks. So it can easily be seen why she earned that number one spot for 2019. And with that, the show is coming to a close. So in the comments below, let me know what you think about this list of the most popular commanders for this year. Do you think that any commanders in particular should be more popular or less popular? Also, make sure you check out the Porcine Stand, our limited edition playmat that's only available for the 30-day Kickstarter campaign. Once that campaign ends, it will no longer be available for purchase, so make sure you're backing the campaign before it's too late. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who helped make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tags. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commandersquarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.